Respected Dharma Masters, fellow practitioners, and guests, almost 500 years ago, in China, a father sat down to write to his son. He wanted his son to know what had happened in his life. Many years before this, when he was very young, he went to a temple. And at that temple, he met a very distinguished man. He naturally paid his respects to this gentleman, who in turn told him, you are supposed to pass the imperial examinations next year. Why aren't you studying? Mr. Liao Fan, for that was the father's name, asked Mr. Kong where he was from and how he was able to know what Mr. Liao Fan was supposed to do. Mr. Kong for that was the gentleman's name, told him that he knew how to predict what was going to happen and that he was supposed to teach this art to Mr. Liao Fan. Mr. Liao Fan went home and being a respectful and filial son, told his mother everything that had happened his mother wisely told him, invite the gentleman to our house, but before we believe what somebody tells us, we need to first test them to make sure what they are saying is the truth. We do not just believe somebody because they say, trust me. They invited Mr. Liao Fan to their home and they asked him to please make predictions for a very short period of time. Everything that Mr. Liao Fan predicted turned out exactly as Mr. Kong had predicted. So Mr. Liao Fan asked Mr. Kong to please predict his entire lifetime. Mr. Kong then said, you will pass a certain examination on a certain day and another examination on another day. You will attain a certain position. You will not have a son. You will die at the age of 53 on the morning of August the 14th between 1 and 3 o'clock in the morning. Many years later, Mr. Liao Fan was up for promotion. One of the things that Mr. Kong had predicted was that he would not get a promotion until he had received what would be equivalent in today's measurement system to about 9,150 liters of rice. When Mr. Liao Fan received only 700 liters, his name was placed for promotion. And even though everything had turned out, as Mr. Kong had predicted, still, he began to doubt the prediction. But then, due to a change of personnel, the promotion was turned down, and it took more years until Mr. Liao Fan was promoted. He did his calculations. He had received 9,150 liters of rice. From then on, he understood everything is destined. And he quit worrying about many things. 
A few years later, he went to a mountain to sit in meditation with a Zen master. They sat for three days, three nights, without sleep, food, water, any break. After three days of face-to-face -face con uh, concentration in the meditation hall, the master said to Mr. Leofan, you are very young to have accomplished this level of meditation. How are you able to do this? Mr. Leofan very honestly said that he knew everything that was destined, so there was no need to worry about things. At this, the master smiled and began to laugh and said, I thought you were somebody very unordinary, but actually you are very ordinary after all. You haven't done anything to change your destiny. To which Mr. Leofan replied, I didn't know we could change our destiny. He then asked the master to please explain how we can change our destiny. The master initially told him, destiny cannot bind those who cultivate great kindness cannot bind those who are thinking only of others who have given up thoughts of selfishness. Next, the master said that he needed to correct his faults and to seek from within. The master quoted Master Hui Nung the sixth patriarch of Zen, and said, quote, All the fields of merit are within one's own heart. If one seeks from the true mind within, one can be in touch with all that one wishes for. End quote. Master Yuen Gu asked Mr. Liao Fan, tell me exactly what was predicted. Mr. Liao Fan told him everything. The master then said, okay, why do you feel you do not deserve an imperial appointment or a son? Mr. Liao Fan replied, he was very quick tempered, very impatient, unkind, he was very critical of others. He was very unkind in his speech. He would say things purposely to hurt others or just to carelessly hurt others. He didn't care. The master explained to Mr. Liao Fan that his faults were the cause of why he was not getting what he wanted, of why his life was still so difficult. The master explained to Mr. Liao Fan about cause and effect. And cause and effect is the basic underlying principle to changing our destiny. We need to understand that everything in this life that happens to us is not because of something external to us, but it is because of things that we have thought, said, or done in our previous lifetimes because every single one of these will have a result 
It may not happen right away. The result may not come for 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, 1,000 lifetimes. But when conditions are right, the cause will generate an effect. Understanding this is crucial to changing our destiny. We need to regret all of our faults. And this is what Master Yuan Gu taught Mr. Liao Fan. First, we regret. Then, we find all of our faults. And after regretting, we begin to change our behavior. This is not easy to do. It takes a long time because we are trying to break many, many lifetimes of bad habits. But we need to begin from now. Mr. Liao Fan was very rare. He honestly told his teacher everything and then he honestly did everything his teacher recommended. He didn't do it for a short while. He did it for the rest of his life. And this was how he changed his destiny. The master told him, live as if everything in the past dissolved yesterday and all the future begins today. If you can accomplish this, then you are a person born anew, a person of virtue and sincerity. The Master told him, Practice kindness. Help others unselfishly, without thinking of self, without any expectation of reward. With this, Mr. Liao Fan paid his most sincere respects to Master Yuen Gu, and then went to pay his respects to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And he wrote down on a slip of paper that he wished to pass the imperial examination. This had not been destined. He wrote down a pledge to do 3,000 virtuous deeds. The Master taught him that what he needed to do, along with practicing the kindness and the good deeds, was to chant a mantra, because for Mr. Liao Fan, this was the most suitable method. And he told him to seek to attain purity of mind, to stop having wandering, wishful thoughts. Mr. Liao Fan left the mountain. Next year, he took the imperial examination and his placement was better than the prediction had destined him to be. He had already started to change his destiny. He was able to see the results so quickly because he was trying so diligently to improve. He watched his every single fault 
but it took him 10 years to complete his vow of 3,000 good deeds. Simple mathematics tells us that that means there were days when he was trying to be a good person that he did not accomplish one good deed. As was said, trying to change our bad habits is very difficult. After he made and completed that first pledge, and it took him 10 years, he dedicated the merits, and then he made a second wish. This wish was to have a son. And again, this had not been destined for him. He again pledged 3,000 meritorious deeds. After a few years, his wife gave birth to a son. This is the son that Mr. Liao Fan was writing his book to. He still worked hard to accomplish those meritorious deeds, to change further his destiny. This time, he accomplished the 3,000 deeds in just four years. So he and his wife, for his wife worked very hard with him along in trying to accomplish the deeds. They accomplished the deeds much more quickly. But still, 3,000 good deeds in four years is not that outstanding, although it is a vast improvement over taking 10 years to have done so. But Mr. Liao Fan thought to himself that he still was not doing enough. He and his wife continued to work harder. Next, he made a vow and a wish. His wish was to pass a high level of the imperial examinations. And this time, he vowed to complete 10,000 meritorious deeds. He told his wife, she told him, before we were in contact with the public, and we met people, and we had opportunities to help people. But now, we're living in the government residence. We don't see people as much. How can we possibly accomplish these deeds? Mr. Liao Fan was thinking of this when he went to sleep. And that night, he had a dream. And in the dream, a heavenly being came to him, and the heavenly being said, Don't worry. Your 10,000 deeds have already been accomplished. The next morning, Mr. Liao Fan woke up and remembered the dream. And he wondered, first, how had the heavenly being known about the 10,000 virtuous deeds? And second, could he really have accomplished those deeds in so quickly, a, so quick a time? He did not understand. Shortly after that, another Zen master passed through town. Mr. Liafon invited him to the government residence and posed the questions of could he really have accomplished 10,000 good deeds in such a short period of time when it had taken him so long, actually 14 years, to accomplish just 6,000. The Zen master replied that yes, if one does 
a good deed with a true, a sincere heart without any expectation of reward, then just one deed can be worth 10,000. The master essentially was saying what Master Yuen Gu had tried to explain to Mr. Liao Fan. Everything arises from our sincerely trying to help others. There are three ways to reform. And these were taught by Master Yuen Gu. The ways to reform are to have a shameful heart, a fearful heart, and a determined and courageous heart. First, we need to have a shameful heart. When we are finding our faults, we need to not simply say, I have this fault. I'm human. Humans have faults. It's okay. I'll try to do better. If I do, great. If not, I'm only human. We need to deeply feel remorse, to feel shame that we are still making mistakes. When other beings have been able to correct their mistakes, other beings have become awakened, have become enlightened. The first step in sincerely trying to correct our faults is to have a sense of shame. This had helped Mr. Liao Fan when he was trying to correct himself. He was gradually learning how to stop thinking of himself and to try to stop help to try to start helping others. This is how he had gradually done more and more things that were good. His one deed that had helped so many people was reducing taxes on well over 10,000 people. This one act is what enabled him to accomplish so many good deeds so quickly. If Mr. Liao Fan had not developed a shameful heart many, many years before, he would not have begun to correct his faults. And if he had not done so, 10,000 people would not have been helped. But even this was not going far enough. Next, we need to have a fearful heart to reform. Mr. Liao Fan had had that dream. And in that dream, a heavenly being had come to him. And he had wondered, how could the heavenly being have known what he was thinking? We are in the human realm, the human dimension. But there are many, many more dimensions. There are beings around us that we in our dimension cannot see. These beings, some of them can see us. Some of them have the ability to know 
our thoughts. They can see everything that we are doing, even when we are alone. They are present. They know what we are doing. And this is how heavenly beings, and this one being in particular, knew what Mr. Liao Fan was thinking. When we are outside in the public, we tend to be on our good behavior, to be more respectful to others. When we are with those we live with, we tend to relax a little bit, to be more at ease, to be a little less respectful, a little more impolite. And when we are by ourselves, we think nobody's around. I can relax. I really don't need to try as hard. I've been trying hard all day. I'll relax a little bit this evening. But we need to remember that even if we're alone in a room, there are other beings with us. They see, they know, they hear everything. We need to have a fearful heart to know we cannot hide anything. We may be able to hide it from other people because as human beings our abilities are very low. We can only see what is right in front of us in the same room. But there are many beings who do know what we are doing. Some of these beings are awakened, enlightened beings, and they understand when we do something wrong. But others just have extraordinary abilities, not great wisdom, and they may not understand when we do something improper or when we have unkind thoughts. So we need to have a fearful heart because there are always other beings around us and they know every thought, word, and deed. Next, understanding this, we need to have a determined, a courageous heart. First, we develop shame and wish to correct our faults. Then, we understand that there really are beings around who know what we think, say, and do. Next, understanding this, we become determined that we will change. That we will be very strict with ourselves. We will not constantly forgive ourselves. We forgive others. We do not forgive ourselves. We are self-critical. But we need to be very careful when correcting others. When we correct others, it is best to do so when other people are not around. This is difficult to do because we often lose our temper and criticize other people. If you remember, being overly critical of others was one of Mr. Liao Fan's very serious faults. We are primarily to be critical of our own faults. 
We try not to criticize others, but when others criticize us, try not to become angry. Try not to become defensive. Even if what they say in their criticism isn't true, try very hard not to defend yourselves. Because if we can not do as we would automatically in the past have done, immediately come up with excuses, say, I didn't do that, why are you criticizing me? If instead we try to say, that's a fault they think I have, I need to be careful not to develop that fault in the future. When people slander us, say things about us, true, untrue, it helps to reduce our negative karma. I know it is very difficult to do this, but this is how we begin to change our faults. And changing our faults is the only way we will be able to change what is destined to happen. If we wish to know what our future holds, we do not need to ask others. Think of what we did today. Did we help others? Did we teach others something? If we taught them, then we have planted the seeds for wisdom. If we saw somebody was upset and we simply smiled at them, this is the giving of fearlessness. And we have planted the seed of health and long life. If somebody is doing something, was doing something today, and we helped them do it, they were cooking, and we went into the kitchen and helped them. This is the giving of wealth. It is the giving of internal wealth, helping others with our physical strength. Giving wealth, we gain wealth. If you remember, I said Mr. Liao Fan had accomplished 10,000 meritorious deeds with one act. But he have, could have accomplished many, many more meritorious deeds. If he had done the act through absolute, complete sincerity, without any thought of selfishness, then his act could have benefited infinite people. When we do something without any thought of self, of what is in it for me, then we are helping an infinite number of beings because we are thinking as bodhisattvas think. There are three methods of practice in reforming. The first is to change through behavior. I have spoken earlier of anger because anger is one of the three poisons and anger 
is so difficult for people to control today. Something happens and our anger flares up and we have lost our temper and it's too late. We have already become angry. We need to think. After we get angry, I became angry, but I understand. I understand cause and effect. If I become angry, I plant the seed of anger. I said earlier, think about what happened today and you will know what is in the future. If we planted the seeds for fearlessness, teaching, wealth, we will have those. If we were angry today and lost our temper, we have planted the seed for anger. The Master told Mr. Liao Fan, do not dwell what is in the past. If we become angry, and then we constantly go over and over what made us angry in the first place. Each time we go over that, we are again planting a new seed for anger in the future. This is why the Master said, the past is over. Do not dwell on it. We are to learn from it. Think about what we did wrong. Learn from it. But then, no longer dwell on it. Think about what is happening now. Think about what will happen in the future. How can I correct that fault? How do I not get angry in the future? Understanding that when we become angry, we plant the seed of anger. And becoming angry is the seed of being reborn in the hell realms. So we understand how serious anger is. We try each time something happens we try to change from behavior, but this is very difficult because so often the anger will simply rise up so quickly that we've already gotten anger, angry. It's too late. We're angry. The next thing we can do is to understand. Anger did not just start today. The person you become angry with, you have known in a previous lifetime. Many lifetimes ago, one of you said something to the other. And without even realizing it, you hurt the other one's feelings. And that was it. Nothing else happened. Many years later, many lifetimes later, that other person, when he met you again, said something to hurt you, and this time it was intentional, but that was it. Lifetimes later, this grows, and when you again meet that person, the anger grows. With each lifetime, it grows stronger and stronger. It gets passed back and forth. And one of those lifetimes, anger is not enough. One of you will hit, will strike the other. At some point, striking the other is not enough. You get into a fight. Then, many lifetimes, later. One of you will kill the other. This is why we have conflicts and wars. It all starts out from one, one careless 
thought. We simply did not think. We didn't mean anything. We didn't think. If we understand that something may seem very inconsequential right now. I may get angry with a person, but we get over it, and a couple minutes later, we're laughing about it. But I have still kept that anger going back and forth. Next, we change through reasoning. Using the same example, when my anger flares up and I become angry, I could not stop it through behavior. I couldn't catch it quickly enough. We understand the reasoning. We understand cause and effect. We understand, okay, I get angry with this person in this lifetime. This person irritates me. And I know this person irritates me. Knowing this, if I can calm down and just think logically, I will realize that if nothing other than for selfish reasons, I do not wish to continue this in a future lifetime. This person is giving me enough trouble right now, and we aren't having enough difficulties right now. I do not wish this to get any worse, and I know it will get worse. This is to change through the second way. This is changing through reasoning, through understanding. It is to understand that when we have faults, we are doing something incorrectly. That incorrectness will come back to us at some point. And we may not be able to do something that we want to do correctly. We may fail at doing it. Remember, everything comes back to us. The only way we help others is through not being selfishness. Now, it was just said that if for none other than selfish reasons, we stop the anger now, not wanting to continue this. If this is the first way that we can start to change through reasoning, then we do it but it is much better, and the results will be much better if when we change through reasoning, we understand that we change for the other person's benefit. This anger has gone back and forth. It can continue to go back and forth. This other person will also feel as upset, as frustrated, as unhappy as I am. For that person's sake, I need to sever this anger right now. I need to understand enough so that the next time something happens, I control the anger. If it flares up, maybe it doesn't flare up quite as severely. Maybe it doesn't last quite as long. So we begin to get some control. The next way of changing is to change from the heart. To change from the heart 
was a higher level of change than Mr. Liao Fan had reached. Because his one act had benefited 10,000 people. But as was said, if it was done with absolute sincerity, it would have benefited infinite people. To change from the heart is to solely think of other people. It is to only think of how we can help others. Mr. Liao Fan wrote to his son that one of the reasons he had difficulty doing the deeds initially and why it took him so long to accomplish the first 3,000 and even the second 3,000 was because he knew what he should do, but he wasn't doing it sincerely enough. He knew he should help a person, but he would stop and think, does that person deserve my help? Do I really want to help that person? He still had thoughts of himself mixed up in doing kindness for others. He still had not understood what the Master was trying to explain to him. When we think only of benefiting others, when we change from the heart, we will do what others need. We will assist them in doing whatever they are doing that is proper without a second thought. We do it as automatically as if I wish to lift up this cup, but it was too heavy, without thinking if I could not lift it up with one hand, I would lift it up with both hands. I don't think about this. I do it automatically. We need to be this automatic in our helping other people to not even think of it. We see that what they are doing is proper, that they are trying to do something good. We don't think about it. We recognize the goodness. We automatically do everything we can to help them. In this way, we will be planting the seeds for others helping us. And we will be planting the seeds for good things in our future. It was said earlier, if we want to know what is destined, Think of what we did today. Think of how we behaved, what we thought, said. That is what our future will be like. And when we go beyond having to think about helping others, when we do it automatically, we will start to dramatically change our future, even in this very lifetime. Mr. Liao Fan gradually changed his ways, but it took him a very long time to do so. Changing destiny takes time, but we are the only ones who can do this because we are the ones who destined what is happening today. So we are the only ones who can change. Everything arises from within the mind. Mr. Liao Fan had asked 
First, imperial appointment. Second, a son. Third, higher imperial appointment. Mr. Liao Fan was destined to die at age 53, August 14th, between 1 and 3 o'clock in the morning. He was writing to his son at the age of 69. He died at the age of 74. I have not told you of any wish to live a longer life. He did not voice such a wish. Actually, initially we start by wishing, but there is a stage beyond wishing. And that is the stage, the level we reach when we are no longer selfish. I have said, heavenly beings, Beings in other dimensions, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, know our every wish. They know what we want. The heavenly beings, the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, all, a lot of beings knew what Mr. Liao Fan wanted. The instant he gave wish, rise to that wish, he did not even have to write it down on that piece of paper. They knew his life was improving. He wished to live longer. By changing his destiny, he got what he wanted eventually without even having to seek. In the book, he wrote, to his son, Tian Shi. He had two sons. He had asked for one. He had the wish inside that he did not even voice, that he would have liked to have more sons. But he only wished for the one. But he was thinking of helping others. And he attained what he wanted without even having to voice the wish. We can attain what we want. We can even go beyond the level of Mr. Liao Fan. If we understand that we need to give rise sincerely, honestly, to help all other beings. We do not have thoughts of selfishness. We do not ask what is in it for ourselves. We ask, how can we help the other person? We become cautious of everything we think, say, and do. We learn all the different kinds of goodness that are described in the book that Mr. Liao Fan wrote to his son. We learn to only think of what other people need. Mr. Liao Fan's destiny was predicted. He saw that it was predictable because it turned out exactly as had been said. Mr. Kong said you will place in this position in a test. He did exactly that. He was supposed to get a promotion when he got 9,150 liters of rice. He got exactly that amount when he got his promotion. He understood destiny existed. He went beyond. He met 
a good teacher. It was said earlier, he was very unusual. Not only did Mr. Leafon practice and do everything his teacher said, he was completely honest. This is very, very unusual. Most of us, when we hear something, nod and say yes, very good. Walk out the door and gradually it fades from memory. Mr. Leofan did not do that. He remembered. He was determined. Nothing was going to stop him from changing his destiny. He was going to do exactly what his teacher said. He was a very rare individual. So rare that his book is very widely read and the advice is taken by many people who try to follow it. The teacher had said, regret, find your faults, regret, correct them, reform, sincerely practice kindness, concentrate the mind, have no selfishness, Mr. Kong had predicted what would happen, but Mr. Liao Fan changed his destiny. He had learned destiny is true. It can be predicted, but it is not fixed. It is changeable. We, like Mr. Liao Fan, likewise, can learn to have the shameful heart, fearful heart, determined, courageous heart. We too can change first through behavior, then through reasoning, then from the heart. And when we change from the heart, then we will be able to create wonderful futures, not only for ourselves, but help others to have them as well. Amitabha.